Hey everyone, welcome to Freedom Point. My name is Travis, and what you see around you is our lambing barn. Uh, also a livestock barn, I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. We're kind of going to go over the differences in, or the, I guess, the pros and cons of the barn. So we'll start with that, and then we'll transition to the pros and cons of pasture. Um, we actually do both on this farm. So these guys are in here for about three months of the year. And then they go back out on pasture for the other nine months on a rotational grazing program. Now, if we had a uh, climate where we had grass growing year-round, I still think I would have a barn to bring them to to lamb. Maybe not keep them in it, just keep the ones that are about to lamb in here and uh, go back and forth from there. But ultimately, all we're doing is just kind of, I've got notes right here in front of me. We're going to talk about it a little bit. So the first thing we're going to talk about is these feeders that you see right here. These feeders yeah. we made ourselves, and uh, there's a video on our channel. If you're interested in them, go back there and, and check it out. Yeah. But these feeders save us a lot of hay. And I say that because if we were feeding on pasture, when we started this farm four years ago, we'd feed on pasture. I'd feed before I go to work. And then uh, when my wife would get home from work, she would check on them. And then when I get home, I would also, yeah. I'd, sometimes I'd feed again depending on the weather. Either way, um, when we had 43 lambs, sorry, 43 ewes, we would feed them by rolling it out on pasture. And the way we calculated it was one 5x5 five five round bale would last one adult ewe the four to five months of hay being fed. Now, realistically, we only fed them, we only had to feed them hay for about three months, sometimes four, but we wanted to make sure we had enough. Regardless, that's what we averaged those years is we basically used an entire 5x5 five five round bale for one adult ewe. Now, we don't do that anymore. We put them in these feeders, and these feeders save us a ton of hay. I say that because we made 75 bales this year. You can see right here where we are storing our hay. Um, there is 34 bales down here, and we started with 75, so 41 bales were used this year. And those 41 bales fed 93 adult ewes with their babies. Yeah, I know there's a lot more than 93 in here right now because of all the lambs. A lot of the lambs have gotten nah. big, and some of them are almost the size of mom. Nah. And then there's also five adult rams. There's also two horses that are outside that have ate four round bales this winter. So realistically, 37 bales fed all of these guys. And I say that because that is a very, that's one of the cons kind of of, or sorry, that's one of the pros of having the barn. It can save you hay. Um, the other thing it, it can do is, if you look around all over the place, there's manure, there's bedding in here under these other the hay residue that they've spread out. And all of this goes back on our hay field, which means I don't have to buy as much fertilizer. With fertilizer prices as high as they are, four or five, even six times higher than they were last year, this saves me a lot of money. And overall, it's hard to run a farm if you're not making <laughs> The biggest thing it's going to come down to for just about any uh, operation is time and money. It's the same thing that everything breaks down to pretty much. And we'll just go through it. So if you're building a barn, right, it's going to cost some money. Uh, it cost my wife and I $52,000 approximately to build this barn. We built it ourselves. We hired out the concrete work. It is an all-concrete floor with stem wall all the way down. Um, so understand that some of these numbers are going to be skewed specifically towards our operation. Now, this barn was also built in early 2020 before prices and everything skyrocketed. So, biggest reasons that we decided we should go to a barn for wintertime are, one, controlled environment. So yes, it is cold outside, and whatever the temperature is outside, it's about 10 to 15 degrees warmer in here, even without insulation. This barn is not insulated, it's not heated, it's just literally a barn. Now their body heat, obviously, is what heats this barn in the wintertime, it makes it warmer than it is outside. Not a dramatic amount warmer, but it is warmer, and there's no wind, and there's no wet weather that's going to get on them. <laughs> in South Central Missouri, our bigger problems are probably ice more than snow. Um, so like freezing rain specifically. Typically what we get, the last two winters have been 
colder than usual and we've actually gotten a lot of snow opposed to freezing rain or rain itself. It's, uh, it's one of those things that your environment's going to kind of dictate that, but this controlled environment makes it to where I don't have to worry as much. The mom is going to keep everybody warm as far as giving them milk and the whole dry and they don't have to have woods to go to, so all of our pastures can be pretty open. A lot of a lot of benefits come from having the barn. Again, it is a big cost up front, but in our calculations for it, we are going to get our money back. And as our flock grows larger and larger, we're going to get that return quicker and quicker. So now, whenever we need to sort, like we did uh, the last video video that posted before this one on our channel, we were sorting lambs, so we had to mark them all. Well, she's marked. I know the orange isn't really showing up, probably. But she's got an orange stripe on her back, and then the males have blue on them. That is just so we can bring them in and, and figure out who's going to the market. But all of this barn right, can be used year-round. So even if they're out in pasture, I can bring them back in here and use the panels and the pens that we have to work them. And last, we have bald eagles that live in the northwest corner, sorry, northeast corner of our property. And specifically during the wintertime, because as the rivers get colder and the fish kind of stay at the bottom, the eagles move away from the river and they find land prey. Lambs are the perfect lamb prey for them. Because when they're born, they're at that weight range where a lot of eagles can pick them up and carry them away. Now, I don't have an exact number of how many they took. Um, I don't even have the video footage to show that they took them. But we did see two of them get carried away on different occasions. And we're certain that they are a bigger problem than coyotes. We have a livestock dog that stays with these guys. And, you know, I'm sure George is not watching the sky for eagles. So I can see how they can get away with it. It's not, uh, it's not a common predator, I guess, in George's mind. But that, that is the, the pros of the barn. Now, like I said, the cons, definitely the cost to build it. There is a slower return on your money, on your investment. And the cost to feed if you were, so if you were in a climate where you could feed year-round on pasture and not have to feed hay, then it's going to cost you more money. Every day that they are inside this barn, it costs me 42 cents per mom per day. I guess the, the bigger picture is kind of going to be where you're going. We're going to grow to 350 ewes, so that'll be somewhere between 350 and 700 lambs. Ideally, it'd be 700, but realistically our lambing rate is about 147% on average the last three years, so that's kind of what we're going with is that we'll have somewhere around 500 lambs. They're not all going to fit in this barn, so we will build two more barns at some point. Uh, it's not going to be today, not going to be next year either. When we get to about 175 in here, adult use, then we will have to have another barn because that's kind of the max capacity that we're comfortable with in here. It's a little crowded at that point. Even right now, you can see that with all the lambs in here, now granted, the lambs are bigger now. They're, you know, some of them are four months old. Uh, most of them are around two to three months old. But they still take up a lot of space at that point. Makes it crowded, makes it not very comfortable living conditions, and I don't want them to live like that because I wouldn't want to live like that personally. It's a controlled environment, it's never wet in here unless they knock the water over and it starts going down there. But we have a Wi-Fi valve, we can actually shut the water off if that happens. It, uh, it makes it to where I don't have to worry about mom giving birth in yeah. South Central Missouri where we typically get freezing rain and not snow. Or we get rain and then it gets, you know, 15 yeah. degrees overnight suddenly. Those are things that make it very hard on lambs and mom as well. We don't want that to happen. We, uh, we used to lamb on pasture for two years, um, we don't do that anymore. Um, it's, it's proven to be cost effective to be in here. I lose way less lambs. Last year we lost six lambs. This year we actually lost eight. Um, a couple of them were stillborn, so that was an unusual situation. But either way, we have gotten it down to a better condition, better living conditions for them, and that results in healthier babies. Are you going to be able to build a barn? I, I don't know. That's up to you guys. It's, it's kind of up to your 
situation, really. The whole debate, in my opinion, is coming down to time and money, right? And essentially, time is money. If they're out on pasture, which we're going to go see here in a minute, there's a lot more things that come into play that aren't a problem in here. So, yeah, let's, uh, matter of fact, yeah, let's head out there now. All right, so I really hope that you guys are going to be able to hear me over the wind. I am going to do my best to recover whatever audio I can. If I can't, I will, uh, I'll do a voiceover. So I've got my notes still from like we did earlier. The pasture itself is an incredible value as well. Uh, I am a little biased about keeping the barn. I don't think I'd ever go away from it, but I would also never go to full-time confinement either. So I like the balance. I really like the nine months on pasture and three months on the barn. Uh, with that said, just like the barn though, that had a, a big upfront cost. Well, so did all of our fencing. So the fencing we put up is about 22,000 feet of fencing. That 22,000 feet of fencing is uh, not cheap. So we actually did that as well uh, in spring of 2020. So prices weren't bad. We, we bought all the materials during winter of 20, uh, late winter of 2019, early 2020, and had it all on hand, and then we started putting it up. And then once the concrete got done with the barn, then we went ahead and built the barn too. So like I said, 22,000 feet of fencing, that includes all of these paddocks. So they have a total of 10 paddocks. Those 10 paddocks total out to about 10, or sorry, four to five acres each. Um, some are a little bigger than others, some are a little smaller than others. But on average, they're roughly about four and a half acres, I would say. So those 10 four and a half acre paddocks are the main rotation. And then there's right here before the barn, there's lambing paddock one. And then you got the barnyard and then you got lambing paddock two. Now, again, they all have their place. Now, originally when we did that, lambing paddock one and two was we we're going to have them separated out when they're not lambing. They would, or after they'd lamb, they'd go on one of those paddocks. You know, it would break up our parasite cycle, so we didn't do it. The, uh, so the, really the only con to, well, sorry, the only pro that I can really think of is, yes, it did cost a lot. Um, we did all the fencing ourselves, and it roughly cost about a dollar a foot, maybe a little more. The uh, cost there is still spread out over a nine-month span rather than just three months. So again, not only is it cheaper, it's like half the price of that barn was, it's also spread out over a longer duration of the year. So we get more use out of it. It is still going to be... It's going to be impossible not to have a con. And I say that because predators. No matter what, predators are always going to be the worst thing that you're ever going to have to deal with. And while the predators that we deal with are typically not coyotes, and they're typically not stray dogs anymore. We actually, right over here uh, in this corner of our... Well, we only, we only own about 15 feet into the wood line. So somewhere back in here, there are two eagles that live here, and they only live here during the wintertime, which ironically enough is also the same time that we have lambs on the ground. Now, a lamb that is so, oh, oh, that's those black-headed vultures. So those are predators too, but they're not, they're not as big of a problem with the sheep. They will only go after ones that are really weak lambs, so... They're not so bad, but bald eagles will kill them even if they're alive and energetic. Like that little brown one that's going for its mom. That one's big enough that they can't do much to it. Um, they could still kill it, obviously, but they kind of leave them alone. But the newborn one, we have a grayish colored one out here somewhere with his mom. He's not, he's not going far from it, or she's not going far from her mom. She's pretty safe. Um, George, the livestock dog, I don't know if you've seen him earlier in the video. He's on other videos on the channel. He is always out and about and does a really good job of keeping all the stray dogs away and actually all the coyotes too. Uh, I don't know how he knows the difference between a neighbor's dog showing up that let's say he has or hasn't met and uh, a stray dog that has ill intentions, but he obviously can tell. 
We have not, since we've gotten him, we haven't lost any animals to coyotes, but we have still lost them to eagles. I'm sure he doesn't see an eagle as a predator in the same manner that he sees a coyote or a stray dog as a predator. And I don't know if that would ever change in a, in a dog unless he sees them consistently doing it, maybe. I, I don't know. So predators are definitely a big con. Obviously, the fencing cost is a con, but it's not. It's a con, but it's also a pro because it's a lot cheaper than the barn, but still more expensive than not having to do anything. Um, fertilizer loss. So if you were going to be on pasture, you know, didn't have a barn, I'm going to lose. This is also based off the concept of you have a hayfield. I can't leave them in the hayfield throughout that whole three months. And oh, there's a gray one right there. You being good, mama? You must be. Anyhow, the uh, the hayfield, they can't be on the hayfield all winter because typically in Missouri, it's just a very wet winter. It doesn't really get cold enough to freeze the ground. And if it does, it's kind of a rarer thing. Um, it usually doesn't stay frozen for terribly long. If we get all this rain and everything else, the barnyard actually turned into a mud pit. And uh, I'll show you a good example up here. This is what a pasture will turn into, especially if it's on if it's if this is something that they're on during wet weather now there we go hopefully that'll blow the wind this is what it turned into and this is actually what our barnyard used to look like because we would confine them in there and just tear up one pasture rather than multiple now the barnyard turned into it looked just like this the whole way through and we would unroll hay for them to lay on to stay warm and also to try to stay out of the mud. Just doesn't pan up. Um, even we even use a small tractor for a long time. It still doesn't matter. It's just going to create rust. If you were to feed by hand and use square bales, sure, it'd delay it a little bit, but it's still going to get ruined. There's just not a lot you can do about wet ground. Wet ground is going to be a problem. Wet ground is going to turn into a mud pit. Just, it's, I don't know what else to tell you about it. But that, that is definitely not something that we can do on our hayfield because I don't want... that. Would, the reason I say that is because if I were to feed them on the hayfield, that would mitigate having to collect manure. That would mitigate having to collect any of that residue to spread back on the manure field or on the hayfield. So it would be saving me time, fuel, and equipment because I wouldn't need that manure spreader anymore. Still need the tractor to feed hay. But then, like I said, we'd, we'd need a roller now to be able to fix the field and get it flattened out again. And then we would probably... You know, you can rent a drill from um, the local USDA, and it's like 10 bucks a, a acre, I think. Something of that nature. Easy enough to do, but again, time and then seed costs a lot of money. You're not coming out ahead. The, the money that I would have invested in time and, and reseeding the hayfield and then having to fix all that or even having to fix pastures and then just pay for fertilizer, no matter what, it's just going to cost money every year that it doesn't have to. Right now, that barn doesn't cost me anything. Um, the fencing actually doesn't cost me anything anymore. So, I mean, once everything is up and built, it doesn't cost you anything. It's, at that point, it's sort of a revenue. It's bringing money in without taking money out. It's hopefully helping you save on feed or anything else in between. Are you going to get rich off of it? Maybe you big enough, I guess. Probably not, but wishful thinking, right? Thing is, is that there's always going to be maintenance stuff to do if you're feeding on a pasture or if you leave them on a pasture year round. You put them in that barn, you can see that none of the pastures have been messed up. And even where they walk through today, so like this is what they walk through today. And this actually, this spot right here is not terribly wet, but it is wet. You can see just from them coming through once, this is what it's already done to it. Now imagine I'm going back and forth, you know, a hundred times, or probably more. They're creatures of habit. They like to go in the same spot for a lot of things. Um, let's see what else. The weather for lambing, we already talked about that. You're going to save more lambs in a barn in a controlled environment than you ever will on pasture. Um, the, the barn will pay for itself on that. And then the other simple thing is time. Time to work with them because you're going to have to come out here and doctor them because their hooves are going to have some problems from staying in this wet environment that whole time. 
Um, you're also going to have more problems with the lambs. You're going to have to doctor. You're going to have to, there's going to be adults that have to get doctored because they're trying to chase grass, even though it's just ingesting parasites. I, I, for our operation in South Central Missouri, it's just not a good answer. Now, a mixture like we do is it, I, I can't think of a better answer. I would not do, like I talked about before, I wouldn't do straight confinement and I wouldn't do straight pasture. But a mixture of them like we do is definitely the winning answer to me. So take it for what it's worth and uh, hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, of course, put them in the comments below. If it's something we missed that, you know, is needing greater detail, we'll still res we respond to all the comments but uh, we will maybe make a video for it to explain it further in detail. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you watching, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed week. saw when they were going from one patch to the other that mud pit that's there. And that's not just from them being there for that day, that's there from last fall because they always go through those gates. If they were being raised in pasture and they were pasture lambing, that would happen. And that's actually some of the reason that we lost so many lambs whenever we did pasture lamb. That barn mitigates that.